Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm going to make this really quick and get right into the video here. This video is about some tips for scratch start TIG. A question came in on my forum from a guy who's trying to get better at running beads using scratch start TIG and he's welding 8th inch thick steel. That's about 3 millimeters thick. And so he wants to know how to avoid craters and how to avoid the whole piece getting so hot that it just welds all squirrely. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's do it. About the best way to learn how to TIG weld is just a pad of beads like this, just overlaying bead after bead after bead, but it gets hot really quick and you have to quench it in a quench bucket and there are some other tricks you can do to keep the heat out of it. But the question came up about how do, how do I get rid of these craters? How do I prevent getting all these craters at the end of the weld? So we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to show you an example of a couple little jobs I did recently that really apply and that's using a piece of copper on like this welding spoon here. I'm doing a little plug weld here. It's welding a little 5 8 uh, piece of all, uh, round stock. It's going to be an axle for a uh, it's going to be an axle for the wheels on the welding cart and I'm go I'm doing several layers here. I'm going to fill it all the way in like a, a plug weld. And so I don't want to, you know, necessarily have that rough oxidized area to go back over, so I put the copper right next to it and hold the arc there for a minute, maintain shielding and whip out and it works really nice. And you can see the, the part here being tack welded onto the welding cart. I'm just using the scratch start TIG to get some really small tacks on it and then I'm going to MIG weld it, uh, MIG weld it up complete. That's coming up in, a, in another part to that welding cart series very soon. Another example is putting end caps on some miter joints here and just putting the welding spoon, the little piece of copper there right next to the weld. Not only does it pull a little heat out, but it kind of traps argon on a corner joint like this and provides a whole lot better shielding. And of course, when I'm finished at the weld and I want to terminate the arc, I pull it on up to the copper, watch it solidify, maintain a little shielding, and pull out. And a lot better result than just using straight up scratch start. We just pull out and leave a big oxidized area. So that, that now when I start back on that or weld to it, it'll tie in all nice and, and clean. Another thing is using using a gas lens will help a lot when you're doing a pad of beads. Now no, most people using scratch start will be using a number 17 air cooled torch. This one's a 17 V with a valve. You really need a valve for scratch start so you can turn the argon on and off when you when you need it. But also clamping a piece to a big block of aluminum like this will help pull a lot of heat out. And if you're wanting to get some practice in, you want that thing to weld the same, the third or fourth or fifth or sixth bead, and you don't want it to get all oxidized and float around on you. You're really not getting very good practice when it's doing that. So this is just an example of a bead run at 95 amps with it clamped down, and then I take it down to the aluminum and pull out and avoid that crater. Let's take a look now at how you would terminate the arc without welding to the end. Like if you had to suddenly, let's say you had to sneeze or something and you wanted to stop. You know, you speed up a little bit after you quit adding rod. You kind of make a little comet tail and then snap out. But that still leaves a little oxidized area and sometimes leaves a crater hole. The thinner the metal, the worse it's going to be. If you're welding on really thick metal, you can avoid the crater hole pretty easily. Well, now let's weld to the copper spoon. I've got that piece of copper on the end of the copper spoon on the edge of this weld. So when I'm gonna when I get to the end of this piece, I'm gonna move the arc over and you can watch that puddle solidify, make a little point on the end and it maintains a little shielding gas and you get a lot better result than just snapping out and leaving a leaving that little bit of oxidized metal that you then have to go back over with a file or grind it or, or whatever. Now, like I said, one of the things that it really helps, no matter what you're doing, if you're practicing welding to keep the surface from getting all oxidized, is using a gas lens. And this is a stubby gas lens kit. It's made to make a 17, 18, or 26, the big style torches. It's made to uh, make them smaller and, and to be able to use a gas lens with them. And they'll also shrink the size where you can get in a lot tighter areas. And I have enjoyed mine for about two years now. And let me just show you. You can see this is the full length a 17 style torch with a standard collet and collet body set up on there and cup and so you break that down and use the different Teflon insulator put the gas lens on there and you can see how much it, it shrinks that size of that torch and lets you get in spots that you just couldn't normally get into you can learn more about those if you're interested at weldmonger.com thanks for watching we'll see you next week